Hello and welcome to Daily Current Affairs by Neo IAS. Today is 23rd May 2019 and the topic we are going to discuss is BrahMos, International Solar Alliance, White Throated Rail, Securities Appellate Tribunal, Map Aided Program and the previous year question revision series. Coming to the first topic that is BrahMos, it is in news because the IAF they successfully fired the BrahMos air version missile uh, from Sukhoi 30 MKI uh, fighter aircraft. So the air uh, launched the BrahMos missile uh, that is a 2.5 ton supersonic air to surface cruise missile. Its uh, range is very close to 300 kilometer and it is designed and developed by BrahMos Aerospace Private Limited BAPL. So IAF became the first air force in the world to have successfully fired an air launched uh, surface attack missile of this category on a sea target. And uh, it is the BrahMos is a short range ramjet supersonic cruise missile that can be launched from submarines, ships, aircrafts or land. Okay, it is indigenously built uh, joint venture between India's, India's NPU and DRDO of India. So they have been formed, uh, they have formed this BrahMo Aerospace Private Limited to make uh, this missile. It's a two stage missile, the, the first stage it is, uh, it's a solid state, a solid propellant booster engine and it brings it to the supersonic speed and the second stage they use this liquid ramjet engine and it takes uh, the missile closer to three mass speed that means three times the speed of the sound. And it has a flight range up to 450 km with supersonic speed all through the flight. And this missile is considered to be the world's fastest missile uh, with a very low cruising altitude. And uh, this missile has been with Indian Navy since 2005. And the name BrahMos is derived from the two rivers of uh, India and Russia that is Brahmaputra of India and Moskova of Russia. Okay. The next topic is International Solar Alliance. So, this is in news because the Cochin International Airport, they have uh, expressed their readiness to provide uh, consultancy services to the other airports of International Solar Alliance, the member countries of ISA. So, uh, Cochin Airport has become the world's first airport to be fully operated on uh, solar energy. So, uh, they have achieved this neutral status in 2015 and they also won this Champions of Earth Award in 2018. So, that is the Champions of Earth Award is the highest environmental honor instituted by United Nations. So, till date 74 countries have signed and uh, 52 countries have ratified the framework for ISA. Uh, ISA is basically a coalition of uh, solar resource rich countries uh, which fully lies in uh, between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn and they, uh, they want to address the energy needs by uh, harnessing solar energy. So the countries that do not fall within the tropics also can join the alliance and enjoy all the benefits as uh, other members uh, within ISA with exception of voting rights. They cannot vote but they can enjoy all other benefits. So, ISA, it's now an alliance of 74 countries who have signed it. It is initiated by India and France and they formed in 2015 uh, in the Paris, uh, Paris summit. The alliance, it is based on uh, the intergovernmental organization and it is also called as International Agency for Solar Policy and Application. And uh, the headquarter is in Gurugram, Haryana. It's the only UN agency which has a headquarter in India. And the goal is basically the ambition is to take joint efforts required to reduce the cost of finance and cost of technology to mobilize more uh, uh, investment needed by 2030 for the, uh, the massive uh, deployment of solar energy. It also deploy uh, around 1000 gigawatt of solar energy and mobilize more than like 1 billion, 1000 billion uh, dollars into the solar power by 2030. So, ISA as I already told you, it's an Indian initiative joined, uh, jointly launched by India and France. It happened in COP21, that is uh, the Paris summit of the UN Climate Conference. The agreement was uh, opened for signature during COP22, which happened in Marrakesh, Morocco. 
and uh, the members take coordinated actions through programs and activity on a voluntary basis. Nothing is binding in this treaty, it is all on voluntary basis. So, three programs have been launched uh, uh, about uh, this International Solar Alliance. One is scaling solar application for agricultural use, then affordable finance at scale, scaling solar mini grids. Okay, in addition to the existing these three programs, two more initiatives has been started by ISA, scaling solar rooftop program and scaling solar e-mobility and storage program. India has a, uh, a scheme for this or uh, the solar rooftop pro program, I think it is Kusum, I am not sure. So, further ISA has also been uh, developing a uh, common risk mitigating mechanism CRMM, if the question comes solar risk mitigation mechanism is related to uh, which initiative they will be giving uh, UNFCCC, uh, ISA, UNEP, IPCC. So, you have to identify which terminology re uh, relates to which organization, ok. So, common risk mitigating mechanism is for de-risking and reducing the financial cost of solar project in the ISA member countries. Another major initiative is the establishment of a digital infopedia. It will be like a platform to enable the policy makers to interact and collaborate with one another in making new policies for uh, uh, helping uh, harness the solar energy. Uh, the next topic is white throated rail. White throated uh, rail is in use because this bird was extinct. It went, uh, went extinct and came back from dead. It is through the process called as iterative evolution. So, white throated rail is basically a chicken sized bird. It is indigenous to Madagascar, it is a flightless bird, actually it is the only flightless bird known in Indian Ocean area. So, it, it belongs to Relidae family and it is a large uh, cosmopolitan family, this Relidae family. Uh, it is ground living birds basically. So, the rails they evolved uh, so that they lost the ability to fly after migrating to Aldabra Atoll. Aldabra Atoll is an Indian Ocean. So, uh, Aldabra uh, disappeared under sea during an inundation which happened in uh, uh, about like 1 lakh years ago. So, it had once gone extinct but rose from the dead due to a rare process that is called as iterative evolution. Iterative evolution means repeated evolution of similar or uh, parallel structures from the same ancestor but at different times. Okay, so a species come back from dead due to this process. So, uh, the white throated rail also came back as a flightless bird. The next is security appellate tribunal. It is in news because uh, NSE, NSE is National Stock Exchange of India. So, they won a partial reprieve of a 90 million uh, uh, fine for allegedly giving unfair access of its network servers to uh, some uh, uh, some other parties. So, that is why they, they were charged with a penalty by Security Appellate Tribunal. So, Security Appellate Tri Tribunal or SAT, they are a statutory body. It came into being uh, under the provisions of Securities and Exchange Board of India, that is SEBI Act and they expose, it was established to dispose the appeals against the order passed by SEBI or uh, by an ad adjudicating officer under the Act. So, they have a preceding officer and two other members. The preceding officer is appointed by central government in consultation with Chief Justice of India or any other nominee of Chief Justice of India. The other two members of SAT are appointed by central government. Okay, the presiding officer should be or must be a sitting or retired judge of, judge of Supreme Court or a sitting or retired Chief Justice of High Court or even a sitting or retired judge of high court who has completed at least 7 years of service as a judge in high court. This is a qualification for being a presiding officer. The member must be a person who have the ability and integrity uh, and has some capacity in dealing with problems related to uh, the securities market, ok. Or who have a, uh, who have experience in corporate law or securities law or finance, economy or accountancy. The tenure is basically 5 years or maximum age of 68 years. Okay, the members hold uh, the tenures of 5 years or 62. So, the presiding officer is 5 years 
or up to 68 years and the members will be 5 years and up to an age of 62 years. The, the power of uh, uh, SAT is basically they are, they are the power of uh, uh, a civil court, they have a power of a civil court and they do the summoning and enforcing of attendance of any person or examine him on oath and they receive evidence on affidavits. They are required to discover and production of documents related to whatever is happening in the security market and they also review its own decision, dismiss an application for default and uh, decides its, uh, its fate and it also set aside any order or dismissal of any application uh, for default and any order passed by uh, the ex party or the already uh, the given orders. Okay, the appeal to SAT, every uh, appeal shall be filed within 45 days from the date on which a copy of order is made by SEBI or uh, the adjudicating officer. Okay, so that's the 45 days is the uh, time period to give appeal from SAT. Next is map aided program, we have Central Highlands of Peninsula Plateau. So, Central High, uh, Highlands of Peninsula Plateau contains, uh, consists of uh, Aravalis, uh, Malwa Plateau, Vindhya, Satpura, Satmala, Chota Nagpur Plateau, then you have Malda Flot, uh, Fault which is a break, then again Meghalaya Plateau. Satpura range consists of Gavalikar, Mahadeo and Maikala range and Vindhya's consists of Vindhyan Scar Plant, Bakelkand and Kaimur Hills. Kaimur Hills is the extension of Vindhya's to UP. And uh, Satpura also has Gavaligar, Mahadeo and Maikala. Maikala have Amar Kantak which shows the example of radial drainage in India. Satmala also have this extension called as Ajanta Hills. Okay, Chota Nagpur Plateau is an intermountain plateau. It has many hill ranges around it like Rajma Hills to, uh, to the top, Ramgar to the east. Uh, then you have Garjat Hills towards down and also it has uh, uh, Hazari Bagh Plateau. Okay, and Meghalaya Plateau after Malda Fault has an extension to Assam called as Karbi Anglong Plateau. These are the various uh, hill ranges or plateaus consisting of central highlands. And river Narmada, it flows through a rift valley between Vindhyas and Satpura. And river Tapi, it flows again through a rift valley between, uh, it, it flows towards the south of Satpura between uh, Satpura and Satmala Hills. Okay. Uh, so, I have a picture also, you can uh, further refer to a uh, clear picture if you have an atlas with you. In previous year question revision series, I have the question I will read out. Momentum for change, uh, climate neutral now, it is an initiative launched by IPCC, UNEP Secretariat, UNFCCC Secretariat, World Meteorological Organization. So, here the answer is UNFCCC Secretariat, it is a direct question, it is a factual question. The uh, this work cannot be done here. So that's all for today guys. I hope you enjoy the session. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. And if you have any doubts or any clarification, please also mention it in the comment box. Thank you so much. Good night. 